Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on a transport layer protocol. In the transport layer protocol, you can see three different, uh, sorry, in the transport layer, you can see three different protocols present. So in the TCP IP protocol suit, if you try to recall, okay, all the layers and the protocols are mentioned. So suppose if this is the application layer, normally this will be on the top at the uh, sender side, then the transport layer, network layer. So here you can see the protocols as TCP, UDP and SCTP. These three protocols are shown in the, in the transport layer. So today I shall be discussing on the UDP protocol. Mainly I will first try to explain about the header of the UDP protocol. Fine. Then we will go to the next services provided by the UDP and some numericals I will try to solve it for UDP. Okay. So now let me just start with the header part of the UDP protocol. So normally as you have learnt in the network layer, for any protocol, whenever you started learning about the header part of the uh, protocol, you used to write it in this manner, a diagram, isn't it? You, so for every protocol which you have learnt in the network layer, normally you have seen what the packet or the datagram by whatever name you call because see for all the different layers, the unit of transmission is given a different name. In data link layer, we normally call it as frame. When you uh, talk about the network layer, you have to call it by the name as uh, datagram. And when it comes to transport layer, you can call it by the name packet. But once again, when it comes to a particular specific transport layer protocol, the name is given in a different manner. For UDP protocol, that is for the user datagram, UDP stands for user datagram protocol. Here you have to call it by the name user datagram. So remember, the unit of transmission is user datagram. So for TCP, what it is called, I'll be telling you when I start teaching about the TCP. Now at present, you remember that for UDP, you are going to call it by the name as user datagram. So for like now and I in general, normally I have we have the habit of telling in general as packet only. So this always consists of two parts, the header part and the payload part. Similarly, when you look at the UDP uh, use UDP user datagram, it consists of the header and the data part. You can see very clearly the header is how many bytes? 8 bytes. It is fixed. Fine. And the next is what data. But if you can see the range here, they have mentioned 8 to 65,535 bytes. That means the total size of this UDP will be what? How much? 65,535. Starting from 8 to. Now, 8 is, how, 8 is always what the header part. Fine. So, what will be the data? Definitely, you will try to subtract 65,535 minus 8. So, it will be how much? 65,000. Uh, 527. This will be the size of the data or the payload. This is how we can calculate the size of the payload or the data in the user datagram. Now, this payload or the data is coming from which layer? So, see this is what I will just tell you with an illustration. If this is the host, at the host you assume the different layers for this host. Fine. Now, this is the transport layer. Here is your UDP. UDP is taking the message from the application layer. Fine, that message is what? The message is the data that is placed in the UDP packet, UDP user datagram. So, this message size, how to calculate is, you just try to see that for the header, you are using 8 bytes. So, you can subtract the total size is 65,535. If you subtract this 8 bytes, you will get 65,527. So, this is what normally you are expecting that the application layer, any process that is running here at the application layer can send a message of 65,527. But look here, one note I have written, messages less than 65,507 bytes can be sent. So, once again from 65,527, I have reduced it to 65,507. The reason is, now this transport layer will send this message to which layer? Network layer. Fine. The network layer will try to encapsulate the UDP in its packet, in its datagram. So, when it is encapsulating, the network layer will add its header part also, isn't it? And the header of the network layer is how much? 20 bytes. So, keeping in view this 20 bytes and 8 bytes at the transport layer, fine. The message that comes from the application layer should not be more than 65,507. So, this 
you have to remember it normally students try to make a mistake here when it is asked what should be the size of the message for the transport layer for the udp protocol then immediately they try to subtract only 8 from 65535 but remember the header part of the uh, network that is the ip protocol should also get subtracted and the header part of the ip protocol is 20 bytes so that's why now finally what is your conclusion subtract 20 for the ip header from this and then write down 65507 this is the max so here this 8 bytes is for what it is for the udp header okay so this will be the size of the data in the udp so this will be the maximum size remember it can be always lesser than or equal to so this is all about what this particular diagram which i have shown here next comes now you try to split this header is how much 8 bytes so that 8 bytes i have put here see what i have done is i have shown an illustration here mainly i wanted to show you only the header part so just look at this the one which i have drawn with black ink the remaining blue ink whatever i have mentioned i will tell you later but this is the header part of what the udp protocol it consists of what four fields header is 8 bytes so four fields each field here is fixed to uh, 4 bytes uh, for uh, sorry totally 8 bytes and no, 16 bits 2 bytes 2 bytes 2 bytes 2 bytes easy to remember i think this is the simplest uh, header format which you have come across till now since the time you started learning the different protocols in the network layer just uh, four fields are there in the udp protocol source port address 2 bytes destination port address 2 bytes udp total length 2 bytes checksum 6 2 bytes now you try to uh, look into the different fields that are present in the header so when i started explaining you about the services of the transport layer i have given very clear explanation about the source port address and destination port address it is like source port number or destination port number you can call it so that is very much essential in the transport layer protocol header see like how you have learnt in networking the addressing mechanism uh, ip source ip address destination ip address similar way for udp you will be writing source port number and destination port number next the third field given is udp total length so in any protocol you take total length is always what header plus data isn't it header plus data or you can call it by the word payload also data and payload means one and the same now header if total length is given in the uh, header here whatever size is mentioned in the header definitely you can easily determine what how much data that user datagram carries isn't it because header is fixed you know the very you know very well the value for header it is 8 bytes total length will be given here isn't it suppose let us imagine that total length mentioned is 40 bytes 40 bytes then you have to find out data so you can easily determine data is in this case 40 minus 8 isn't it 32 bytes so this way you can calculate the size of the data in any given numerical problem which is asked on user datagram okay this is one aspect of uh, the header part i wanted to tell you source port number destination port number already i once again i'll try to tell you see these port numbers i have shown the complete range also in the introductory class for the transport layer so totally how many 65536 port numbers are possible the range will start from 0 that's why the last one will be 65535 that complete range is divided into three parts that also i have explained please refer to my previous video the first one in the transport layer services okay there i have shown try to first remember one important aspect is the well known port number well known port numbers are mainly meant for the destination port address so these are the port numbers that are assigned to the different services provided by the servers so normally what is that i told you you just try to remember this uh, transport layer works in client server paradigm that's why i always give a symbol for the server in this manner but this is what i'll try to show it with a host type only the client so now here whatever is there it is the source port address whichever process is running at the application layer will get a source port address or source port number and whichever address the particular process is running here at the server at the application layer it will get a destination port address 
so these two are required no because without this destination source port number and destination port number you cannot make a logical connection between the client and the server okay that's the reason these are very much essential so whenever a message is sent so this port numbers are very much required the client port number is included in the header and the destination that's why it will reach that particular uh, process in the application layer at the destination so which are the port numbers that are meant 0 to 1023 this is the range for what well known port numbers okay these are the different port numbers assigned to the different services at the uh, server side so you can remember there in the list you can see very clearly the different port numbers mentioned just uh, there is one table given in the textbook please refer the book for us and there i can see one table wherein the different processes and the different services and the uh, different port numbers respective port numbers are assigned like for ftp what is the port number for telnet what is the port number for dns what is the so these are the different application layer protocols so for each of these services there is a port number assigned that port number will always be in this range only 0 to 1 one zero two three whereas the port numbers that are there at the client side will be what ephemeral port numbers they are not called as well known they are called as ephemeral short lived okay and th that port numbers can be collected from where from the dynamic or the private port numbers list which starts from 49,151 to yeah 49,152 yes to 65,535 these are called as the private or the dynamic port numbers so that port numbers is a must here then you have a field called as checksum checksum is to you have learnt in the network layer also what for the checksum field is included the values that are present here in the header okay will be first added taken a complement of that okay value and it will be included in the checksum by the sender and then it will be sent to the receiver so the same procedure is here also the same purpose is here also it will check whether the user datagram is corrupted or not but there is one main difference here for the checksum calculation in the network layer you have seen that the checksum will only try to see whether all the fields that are present in the header okay are not corrupted fine there are so many fields now in the ip header ipv4 you take or i uh, in ipv4 if you remember you had the field checksum so it is going to check only the values that are present in the header it is not bothered about the data but in checksum here in the udp it will also include what the header part the values that are present in the header as well the data so these two things are included here in the checksum to uh, in here uh, in order to calculate the checksum and one more important aspect of uh, this one checksum here is checksum is not mandatory this is this point you remember any time if the sender wishes not to calculate the checksum then the sender will fill this checksum field with all zeros all the 16 bits will be filled with zeros so when it sends a user datagram with a checksum value filled with filled with all zeros the receiver will understand that no need to calculate the checksum so that's an indication the checksum with all values zeros is an indication that checksum should not be calculated so it is not mandatory first difference and also it includes the data part in order to find out whether the user datagram contents are corrupted or not then now when the checksum is calculated not only the fields of the header but and data but also these parts are getting included these fields now what are these fields you call it by a name called as pseudo header but what does it consist of it consists of 32 bit source ip address 32 bit uh, destination ip address then there is one uh, field with uh, filled with all zeros then you have an 8 bit protocol okay field and you have a 16 bit udp total length this fields it is included here in the checksum calculation so now remember this point whenever a checksum is calculated at the receiver side not only the fields that are present in the header so that means these fields that are there in the header plus the data plus the fields that are present in the pseudo header these fields are actually added here now which are these fields see these fields you would have seen in the ipv4 now what is happening is when from the transport layer the user datagram goes to the next layer that is the network layer isn't it the network layer definitely it will 
add its header that is there it will definitely add it has to add its source ip address and destination ip address but here in the transport layer for udp this checksum is done with the source ip address and destination ip address now this reason is very interesting why you are including the source ip address and destination ip address also see one more thing if you remember in ipv4 when or ipv6 when the packet starts moving from the source to the destination there are certain field values that remain same they are not going to change until it reaches the receiver if you try to see the total uh, ttl value it gets changed from one node to another node the ttl value gets changed okay like that there are few fields but the fields which here which are mentioned here like 8 bit protocol 32 bit source ip address 32 this will never get changed from the point where it started from the source to the point until it reaches the destination these fields are included here mainly the reason is 8 bit protocol is intended now i will tell you first in the reverse way to which protocol of the transport layer <coughs> this message has to go or which protocol of the transport layer is involved here in receiving the message that information is included once again 16 bit udp total length is included here whatever is mentioned it is included here but this part to get included is interesting because this is the source fine this is the destination now we are telling that okay the all the fields of the header of the user datagram should not get corrupted during transmission and that will be checked but why checksum is involved is see sometimes what will happen no we have to assume the other possibilities also the message has come from the source okay it has reached the destination it has reached what it has reached the receiver or whatever is the host here a and b it has reached from the source to the destination or from the sender to the receiver the contents of the packet if at all if you just imagine if this is not there if pseudo header is not included in the checksum all the fields here and the data is not corrupted it is perfect it has reached successfully the destination assume that if destination ip address is corrupted in the ipv4 header then the message is correct but it is reaching the wrong destination isn't it if it reaches the wrong destination then there also some processes may be running isn't it because the destination port number is there this particular uh, host will try to send that message to the destination address that is mentioned in the udp header isn't it but first thing is the host itself is wrong so hope you all are getting my point first you assume that we are not including the pseudo header in the checksum calculation we are only including this regular header of udp and the data fine now there is no uh, uh, the fields are not corrupted and during transmission and it has reached successfully the host the receiver host but the receiver is not the correct receiver it is because we have to assume that during transmission in the ip header if the destination ip address is corrupted then it will go to some other wrong host and the message will be sent to the wrong process that should not happen so that's the reason this checksum calculation also takes care that yes the packet should reach the correct host only that's the reason it is going to include the uh, destination ip address and the source ip address also in the checksum calculation so hope this explanation is uh, helpful to you all so in this explanation i have mainly concentrated only on the header part of the uh, user datagram protocol so in my next uh, video session i shall try to explain the services provided by the user datagram protocol thank you bye bye take care